Next week, we do have Season of the Splicer beginning. So, Ada One will be in the tower with Transmog. Uh, defeat Bellman. Transcendent Mind in the Glassway Nightfall, the ordeal. So, that's where we're going to start for the Nightfalls. And then we've got Team Scorched Returns in Crucible. Uh, a couple other reminders for you guys to make sure you delete all of your shaders. Um, anything that is in your inventory going into Season 14, you're basically going to lose it. So, you may as well break it down now for the Glimmer and also the Shards. And then the final thing to make sure for you guys as we're getting a new season next week is to wrap up everything for this season. Your season of the Chosen Seal, if you haven't done that yet. Uh, anything from Bungie Rewards, if you're trying to buy anything from the Bungie store related to the season. All that stuff's going to switch over on Tuesday, so make sure you guys figure that stuff out before Tuesday. Try and do that over the weekend so you're for sure done. And it does seem like Guardian Games is officially over. Uh, Hunters seem to have banked the most medals in general, and it does also seem they've got enough daily wins to complete everything. So let's go to the tower and see what the ceremony is like, and then I'm sure Zer is in the tower one more time as well. So it would seem right now there is an issue trying to complete the closing competitor triumph. So honestly, if you haven't tried to complete it yet, you might actually wait and not do it. Maybe they'll have it fixed over the weekend. So if it's, you know, bugged early on, but you wait until they do some fix on their end, that you'll be able to do it. But if you are having issues, that's why. Currently, there's an issue with the closing triumph. I talked to Zavala. I tried to pick up the quest. It says, go visit the podium. Can't visit the podium. So just wanted to clarify. As we head over into the hangar, guys, uh, just a reminder, podcast, uh, the last word, number 148 with E.K. Equagan. Uh, he's going to be joining us tonight to talk about all the new stuff for Season of the Splicer. So join us tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll show you guys a little thumbnail afterwards, but for now, let's see what Zer has for sale. So you got your exotic engram. If you guys are looking for a random piece of armor roll, you can always spend your 97 shards. See what you get. Got a hollow fire heart. Still looking for some better boots, but that's fine. Now let's go through his stuff for sale. Sky Burner's Oath. A little late in the season for this one, but it is still a decent one for Cabal. So your perk is slug fire. This weapon lobs large explosive seeking slugs. When you're firing from the hip, you can actually do a decent amount of that from the air as well for you airborne subclasses. When aiming down sights, the slugs travel fast and straight with higher damage and lower rate of fire. Honestly, it's almost better shooting from the hip on this one. Decent tracking, decent aiming, accuracy. Um, overall, more fun to kind of be a AC-130 is what this one's generally called. The weapon is full auto and does extra damage to Cabal and penetrates Phalanx Shields. So, if you like killing Cabal and need a reason to do it, this is probably one of the better scout rifles for that. For the Hunters, we've got the Gwizen Vest. Each Spectral Blades kill you make before going into stealth will restore more of your super energy. Basically makes, makes Spectral Blades last longer. For stats over here, we've got 14 mobility. If the resilience was a little bit higher in recovery, this would be pretty, pretty stout. But you still have 18 in intellect. That's not too bad with 14 in mobility. Recovery, obviously, we all wish that one would be higher. But generally, 2 out of 3 is not too bad. Could be better, but not the worst. Overall, if you like going Spectral Blades, not a bad one to consider picking up. Decent stat roll as well. For the Titans, we've got Mask of the Quiet one. This one's always a good one just to leave on and forget about it because it is just used all the time. You get you are granted ability energy anytime you're damaged. Happens a lot. So you're going to get a little boost in your ability recharge time all the time you're taking damage. So, I mean, everybody's going to take damage at some point in this game and you always get a little bit. When you're critically wounded, you also will regain maximum health on kills. So if you're at the brink of death and you get a kill, you'll get your health back to full, which is, you know, helpful to keep you in the fight. As for stats, we've got 15 in mobility, which I still don't love that stat. Resilience of 10, not terrible for 100. Discipline 18, intellect 11, not bad. Would like to see recovery be higher, with some mobility and the recovery would honestly switch, and then I'd say this is actually pretty cool. Overall, not a bad one, and if you are a new Titan and you don't have this one, it's just good to put on and leave on. You can basically use it all the time. So, if you're a Titan and you just, you know, want to put an exotic on and forget about it, anytime you take damage, getting a ability bonus. If you get critically wounded, you get maximum health on kills. Can't complain, and not a bad stat roll either. Finally, for the Warlocks, we've got the Vesper of Radius. This is chest armor. It does look very cool. I just wish the perk was a little better. Um, if you guys love this thing and have a good example where you use it, please let me know, just because I don't typically find this one that appealing. Rifts release an Arc Shock Wyvern when cast. means things need to be near you when you cast that to do any damage to them. Rift Energy recharges faster when you are surrounded by enemies. If you're surrounded by enemies, it's going to probably be a really spicy moment if you're in a tough situation where you're going to need health. So overall, you know, getting a little arc shockwave and getting your, you know, rift faster when you're surrounded by enemies, that's not beneficial. If this was when surrounded by allies, that actually would be kind of cool. As for if, if there is a good use for this, please somebody comment below. I'm just not seeing one off the top of my head. Stats on it are not bad, though. 
16 recovery, 16 intellect alone is worth considering. Mobility is a little low, discipline 7, strength 7, but generally recovery and intellect being that high alone, you know, that's a reasonable stat roll in the first place. If there's a good use for this that I'm missing, please somebody comment. I'll, pin, you know, I'll pin that one up to the top. So let me know if there's something I'm forgetting about this one with a specific build. Other than that, that does pretty much wrap up Zer. So we've got, again, the podcast will be starting in about three hours from when I'm recording this one, but it will be 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv slash Abontis. We've got EK, the man with the golden vault, the Grandmaster Sherpa himself. Awesome guy, really nice guy. Really looking forward to chatting with him and lots of stuff to discuss with Season of the Splicer. Also, if you guys are new to the channel, you enjoyed the video, please drop a like below. And as I said, leave a comment about any of these exotics if you have certain builds that they work well in. If you are new to the channel and you do like it, drop a subscribe on the channel. Always a nice way to support the channel for free. And if you really want to see the videos coming to you, hit that alert bell as well. You guys can also find me over on Twitter. Thank you guys very much for the support. Tomorrow, I'm probably going to be finishing up a Resident Evil 11 big long Saturday stream for Resident Evil, sorry, 8. We're not even on 11 yet. Resident Evil 8, I'll be playing tomorrow on my stream. So see you guys tonight, maybe tomorrow. Have an awesome one. Enjoy your weekend.